Цьогорічне відзначення Шевченківської нагородою за журналістичну працю імені Івана Сирника припало канадському часопису «The Globe and Mail». Під час урочистостей з цього приводу нам удалося поговорити про футболіста Андрія Шевченка з кореспондентом спорту Джоном Дойлом, а головного редактора Джона Стакауса запитати, чому «The Globe and Mail» не використовує прийнятої форми Київ до столиці України. Свято проголошення і вручення нагороди імені Івана Сирника Шевченківської фундації за визначність в журналістиці відбулося в престижних приміщеннях Торонтонського університету. Урочисте свято зорганізувала доктор Христина Туркевич. Has provided over nine million dollars to the community in support, to support, preserve, and sustain the vibrant Ukrainian-Canadian culture and heritage in this multicultural land that we are so fortunate to call home. Нагорода імені Івана Сирника за визначність в журналістиці є свідомим напрямом фундації сприяти публічній документації українського буття в Канаді. Президент. Української канадської фундації імені Тараса Шевченка Андрій Гладишевський пояснив думання фундації та потребу створення такої нагороди як стимул на включання українсько-канадської тематики в публікаціях канадської преси. Ми маємо хоритаж, що вийшли з країни України, де новини про цю країну були зупинені за кілька генерацій, де немає новини про цю країну. Country now a republic was allowed to actually come out to the West, and so it is of great significance to me. And the fact that this award was named in honor of John Cernick, a visionary, a long-time influential influential editor of one of the oldest Ukrainian newspapers in Canada, Ukrainsky Holos, Ukrainian Voice, for over 100 years, that newspaper has been in Canada. It is his dedication and far-sightedness. That inspires this award. News about Ukraine, as this award was primarily given for, is of interest to all Canadians, but in particular to us of Ukrainian heritage. News about Ukrainian heritage in Canada, its culture, its people, is of interest to Canadians and is fundamentally relevant to their daily lives. We are here this evening to pay tribute to the Globe and Mail for their coverage of the 2012 elections in Ukraine with well-researched and thoroughly written articles by several journalists. We honor the Globe and Mail on behalf of our community, the entire Ukrainian-Canadian community. Нагороду імені Івана Сирника за визначність в журналіститі цього року припала канадському часопису The Globe and Mail. За чітке представлення процесів, зв'язаних із виборами до Верховної Ради в Україні 2012 року. Ручати нагороду цього вечора влучно запрошено голову місії канадських спостерігачів на цих виборах – сенаторку Рейнел Андрейчук, яка елоквентно оповідала про ці процеси в Україні. Я тут, щоб дати трибут. Трибут до Тарас Шевченко Фаундації для візію документувати історію України українців в Канаді і більшу канадську комуніту і збирати їх разом. We had for many decades um, danced our way, sung our way through Canada, and worked hard to be part of Canada. I think the Tarasha uh, Shevchenko Foundation has changed that into uh, bringing it into the literary sphere, the cultural sphere, and the written word. And so this award is part of that process of documentation and respect for our history and our presence today in Canada. What Finally, the Globe and Mail did for me was to shine a light on how complex nation building is, how complex democracy is, and how difficult elections are to monitor. We come with our own biases. We come with our own understandings. By the international press being present, Ukrainians learned more about the election process 
and we learn more about the Ukrainian community and what it needs. We need to continue to support them. We need to shine that light, not just at election time. We need it throughout the entire cycle leading to the next election. President Shevchenkov's Foundation Andrei Gladyshevsky and Senator Reynel Andrejchuk together gave the head of the director John Stackhouse correspondent of sport John Doyle, časopis of the Globe and Mail, Nagorodu, imene Ivana Sernika, za veznačnic v žurnalistici. Shevchenko Foundation proudly present the John Sernik Journalism Award to the Globe and Mail for the coverage of the 2012 elections in Ukraine with well-researched and thoroughly written articles of importance and relevance to all Canadians by Brian Bonner, John Doyle, Derek Fraser, and John Stackhouse. Nagorodzenej główny redaktor harno mówił o trudności i namaganiu ukraińskiego narodu stworzyć dzisiejszą demokrację w Ukrainie. The World Association of Newspapers, which holds its annual conference in a different country every year, had scheduled a number of years ago for it to be in Kiev last year, and then realized that the conference was coinciding with the elections, and it was generally believed the elections were not legitimate, and that would be very awkward for a group of publishers and editors to be meeting to talk about newspapers and our role in the world while an illegitimate election was taking place. There was a serious debate about moving the conference or canceling it altogether, and it was finally decided that we would go ahead and we would hold it uh, and state our purpose as journalists uh, in shedding light on the darkest corners of the world, uh, whether we are welcome or not in those, uh, in those corners. And I was uh, very fortunate uh, to be part of a wonderful moment, I think both in uh, newspaper journalist uh, history and Ukraine history, when the president came to give an address to our conference. And uh, as soon as he rose up, the Ukrainian editors in the room all stood up together in protest, silently, and stood through the entire speech. Uh, I've never seen a head of government look more intimidated, uh, being stared down by silence. It's an extraordinary sight to be that powerful and yet so weakened by silence. And uh, if there's anything I could leave with you tonight, it was just the, uh, the uh, journalistic passion that we have to shed light on that and uh, the vigor that I take away from tonight that we have to continue with this and uh, hope we will continue to cover not only the Ukraine but uh, uh, all the important countries of, uh, of the world in the years ahead. Після урочистостей ми заговорили до кореспондента спорту Джан Дойл на тему Євро-12 і про роль в ньому футболіста Андрія Шевченка. My first encounter with Ukraine both in terms of politics, soccer, all of that, was at the World Cup in Germany in 2006. And I, it was, uh, I was there to cover the tournament, and by a, a quirk of fate and timing and travel, I was actually at all of Ukraine's games at the 2006 World Cup. And I remember the first game they played, which was in Leipzig. And I remember being at the train station, watching the supporters of Ukraine come out of the station, and they were kind of shy, they were kind of quiet compared to most of the fans at the tournament. And I realized that that was because it was Ukraine's first time at a World Cup. It was Ukraine's first opportunity as a newly independent country to be truly on the world stage at the World Cup. And I was impressed by that, by, by uh, the significance of their attitude and their fact that they were awed by being at the World Cup. The next day, I, have, I was in Berlin, and before the game in Berlin that evening, I did what most tourists do in Berlin. I went to see the remnants of Checkpoint Charlie. And at that visit to what was Checkpoint Charlie, I noticed that many of the people who were visiting at the same time were the Ukrainian supporters who had been in Leipzig the day before. And I watched them go through and around Checkpoint Charlie, and I realized that for them, of course, it had a far greater significance than it did for me, because the end of Checkpoint Charlie, the end of the Berlin War, the end of the Soviet Union meant finally an opportunity for independence for Ukraine. And I was deeply impressed by their attitude, by the way they behaved, 
by their entry into the world by being at the World Cup. And at that point, I knew that Euro 2012 would be in Poland and Ukraine, and I hoped I would be there, and I was, and it was an absolute pleasure to be in Ukraine for that tournament. Now, what do you think of the Ukrainian team, uh, including Shevchenko? Well, I think Shevchenko's days are gone, obviously, he's retired. He was a great player, and I think it was a, a testament to, to his skills as a player, a testament to his commitment to, the, to Ukraine and to the national team, that even so late in his career, he performed so well, so astonishingly well at the Euro 2012 tournament. It was a remarkable feat on his part. He lifted the country, he lifted the team. And I think one of the things he did in doing that was to give hope for the future, to let the public know, the supporters know, that it didn't end with Ukraine co-hosting the tournament, but that, that there would be always be a great Ukrainian future in football, in international soccer. I think the Ukraine team will do well for the foreseeable future, and he will be an inspiration to them. Ми також приступили до головного редактора John Stackhouse про процеси розвитку демократії в Україні. You mentioned very interesting comments about Russia and Ukraine, and Ukraine sort of being a pivotal point. Yes. Uh, but are you aware of all the bullying that seems to be happening? Russia bullies the whole world. Yes. But it, bu it, it, it bullies Ukraine that much more. Ab absolutely. And, and it would be great to, to hear a lot more about that in, in your paper. It, 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 it is something we should pay more attention to because the, uh, the rise of Putin's Russia has uh, been significant uh, for the world, both uh, positively and negatively. And we need to uh, pay a lot of attention to the negative consequences of that. Ukraine bears the brunt of it more than uh, perhaps any other, any other country. And uh, we should pay, pay more attention to that. I was uh, struck during my visit to uh, Kiev last year by the presence economic and political of Russia in the country and the threat that that poses to all of Europe. If uh, you, you if, I doubt we're going to see Ukraine toppled the way it might have been a, a century ago, but we'll see this creeping, creeping influence, political and economic, uh, which is should be a concern to uh, not only all of Western Europe but to uh, the rest of the world. It seems like a sensitive topic for the Ukrainian community, the way uh, Kyiv is mentioned. Yes. K-Y-I-V as yes. opposed to, maybe, maybe you could tell us about what your position is and why you're still still in that sort of Soviet uh, world. Yes, that's a, that's a good question for you to ask and it's something that we have an ongoing conversation about. It's uh, uh, not, uh, not restricted to Ukraine or Kiev. It is uh, something we deal with with respect to place names around the world. Mumbai, Bombay, Yangon, Rangoon in Burma. Uh, we have a style committee that uh, reviews the names that we use every year. I'm not part of the committee. Uh, they determine uh, what is the most uh, authentic uh, spelling of a name. Very difficult, or more challenging with transliterated uh, names. Uh, and understanding that spellings can be political statements. So we try to be as objective as we can, respectful of history, respectful of the democratic opinions, of the people in countries, and also mindful of the politicization of place names, which is all to say it is constantly under review. So then why aren't you saying Kiev? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will raise that tomorrow with the, uh, with the style committee. John Omdoilo, a головного redactora Johna Stakhausa, zapytati, czemu the Globe and Mail ne wykorzystuje prejnatej formy Kiev do stolecji Ukrainy? Свято проголошення і вручення нагороди імені Івана Сибника Шевченківської фундації.
Nahorada imene Ivana Sernika za veznačnost v žurnalistici je svidomem naprijemom fundaciji sprejate publični dokumentaciji ukrajinskog obutja v Kanadi. Prezident ukrajinskoj kanadijskoj fundaciji za veznačnost v žurnalistici vidbolo se v prestižnej premišćenjah Torontonskog univerzitetu. Uročeste svijato zorganizovala dr. Hristina Turkjevič. The selection committee members were requested to reward truthful, well-researched and journalistically sound reporting. The foundation, created by an act of parliament in 1963, has provided over 9 million ta potrebu stvorenja takoj nagorode jak stimul na vključanje ukrajinsko-kanadskoj tematike v publikacijah kanadskoj presi. We have a heritage of coming from a country Ukraine where news about that country was suppressed for basically several generations. Цьогорічне відзначення Шевченківської нагородою за журналістичну працю імені Івана Сирника припало канадському часопису The Globe and Mail. Під час урочистостей з цього приводу нам удалося поговорити про футболіста Андрія Шевченка з кореспондентом спорту 